Hi, welcome. Um, I'm uh, Mary Beth Crusher. I'm the voter registration chair, but I wear many hats within the party. We've very much expanded our voter registration effort a couple of years ago to include vote by mail as an equal push, which has been very fruitful. We've done very well with the vote by mail enrollment, so it's been good. Lisa Askowitz, who's here, is my co-chair. Um, and uh, Lisa and I mainly spent a lot, long time gathering huge groups of volunteers and trying to train as many people as possible so that anyone who comes across a voter who's in need of voter registration is able to help them with voter registration. This training will be about far more than that. So I'm not going to focus for a long time on any one particular thing. I'm going to try to go through quickly. So please don't, I mean, go ahead and feel free to stop me and ask a question if A, I'm not making any sense, which can happen on occasion, or B, um, I am um, just going too quickly and maybe assuming too much. Um, so, uh, and, and I like to think that some of the information we provide is helpful even to those who've already done voter registration perhaps many times before or already and knows how to enroll people and vote by mail. But I'm going to go over this quickly and hopefully we'll get to, you know, all your questions if you have any. Um, so this is a voter education and engagement training specifically because our understanding is that the committee people, you will be doing the same thing that Christine Davies, who is here also is going to be doing. She's going to be canvassing in, um, West Grove. And so you hopefully will be reaching out to voters by phone, but hopefully we'll get to the point where you're also getting volunteers and others in your area to help you put um, slate cards on doors and maybe knock on a few doors as well. Um, and hopefully in your work in the next um, two months and then beyond, you'll be encountering voters on a regular basis and, and you'll want to at least have touched and seen this information. Um, so I, I like to make sure that everyone knows a little bit at least so that you are able to help voters because when you know something, it's usually far more than what the voter knows um, who might be uh, seeking your advice. Hi, Jerome, welcome. Um, Jerome. So I am gonna begin with voter registration. Voter registration deadline is Monday, October 5th. That's a very hard deadline. The application, if it's on paper, must be submitted to the elections department. SOE means supervisor of elections. It must be submitted to the elections department by 5 p.m. If they're doing an online application, it can be, must be done by midnight, 11.59, let's say. Um, and online, you can go to www.registertovote.miami. And I'm gonna quickly whiz through who can register to vote um, and who cannot. So people 18 years and older can vote. Mary, Mary yep. Beth, one question. Will we be able to access this document? Yes, um, okay. Lisa can actually drop this in the chat if you have it, Lisa. Do you have it? Otherwise, I will drop it in the chat. Is uh, it in Google, Google Drive? Yes. Oh, are you, if you're doing it right now, yeah. No, I'm not going to do it right now, actually, because I have okay. hard to get into the chat. I'd have to go off this page. <laughs> right. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll so, find it. No worries. Um, so, uh, so people who are 18 years and older can vote, but people 16 years and up can register to vote. And on their 18th birthday, birthday, the elections department will process the applications, the same application. There is nothing different. Obviously, citizens, you need to be a citizen of the United States to vote. That includes Florida residents from Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. It's a state form that we use, and it's on the online, it's a state application. So anyone in the whole state, you can help register to vote. Doesn't matter what county they are from. And there's no length of time that you must be a citizen before registering to vote. They actually give out voter registration forms at the naturalization ceremonies. Um, so, and they have sometimes have voter registration personnel from the elections department there. So there's no length of time. A millisecond after you take the oath, um, you can go ahead and register to vote. Um, in, in our situation, of course, you're looking for re residents of Florida and Miami-Dade County specifically if they want to vote in county elections. And there is no length of time you must live in Florida um, in order to register to vote um, and a Florida identification is not required to register to vote. So I can step into the state of Florida and say, I think I'm staying, I'm gonna live with my sister, and I'm going to register to vote. Um, or you can be homeless and use a, a homeless shelter as a registration address. Um, just any address you feel is going to be relatively stable because every time you move, you're going to have to update that address, obviously. And then your polling location on election day changes as well. Um, so 
your intention must be to live in the state of Florida. You must register, and of course, that you can't vote in more than one state. That's that goes without being said, although I'm going to say it. <laughs> you must register at least 29 days before an election in order to vote in the upcoming election. That date this year for our November 3rd election is October 5th, and we talked about that up above. Returning citizens, these are people who have a felony conviction on their record, um, and they are unable to register to vote unless they have had their rights restored. And the Amendment 4 has restored most voters, most eligible um, returning citizens' rights to vote if they have paid certain fines and fees and completed their sentence. If you encounter someone who has a former felony conviction on their record and, and they, they are like, oh, it, it's not your job to decide, by the way, whether or not they are eligible to register to vote or not eligible to register to vote. Um, as a matter of fact, in our county, it has been reiterated over and over again by, by the state's attorney's office that they are not prosecuting anyone who attempts to register to vote in good faith um, because the, the law, the, obviously the back and forth in the courts has been extremely confusing. It's very hard to keep up with what the rule is and, and, and what the rule isn't and what you need to have completed and what you don't. And not only that, it's very hard to even access that information um, for people um, with you know, a record. It's hard to find the full set of records because the, what you owe is not on the same page as what your sentence was. So sometimes it's very, very confusing. So people, anyone with a, a felony sentence in their past that has completed their time in prison and believes they paid their fine and fees can go ahead and register to vote. If they have any question, we like to refer them to the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition hotline. The reason we want to do that is because um, they have money to assist them paying their fines and fees. We don't want to see anyone continue to go without their full rights because they were unable to pay. So we want to refer them to them. Um, and there's the number there that we have, 1877 my Zero. Um, and they also will help them confirm their eligibility to register and help get them registered. Conversely, who cannot register to vote? Anyone who's not a U.S. citizen, anyone who's been adjudicated mentally handicapped with respect to vote, voting and has not had their vote, right to vote restored, anyone with a felony conviction who believes that they have not met the requirements. I would say, well, if you don't think you have, why don't you take this number anyway and, and uh, check in, but um, then you know, skip it today if you want to. Um, it, I note that if you're doing in-person voter registration, you do not need to see the applicant's ID or proof of citizenship. Your job is to help the potential voter understand the requirements and complete the form if you're using a paper form and you're with someone in person. Do not feel like you're, someone is, you know, you don't know if that person's really a citizen. You don't know if they really are putting their accurate, you know, last for a social. They don't seem to know it. It's not your job. Your job is to guide them through the process, and that's it. It's up to the elections department and the state to decide who actually gets registered in the end. Um, your target is new registrants, obviously. So if you're, if you're, a lot of you, if you're committee people or even campaign folks, you're knocking on the doors of people you already know are registered and you already know are Democrats or you're calling people who are already um, in that situation. But you may come across people who now have someone home for the pandemic in their household. And they realize, huh, now they're home, they're gonna be home to an unlimited amount of time, maybe I should get them registered so they can vote here because now they are no longer at their school. They're, no, they're doing school online from here, they're gonna be living here for the next year. A, you know, a child or someone just came of age and is 18 and now can register to vote. So you're gonna come across these instances. So you wanna talk about you know, your ability to help someone get through the process of registering to vote for the first time. Um, there are people who need to update their address. You might call someone thinking they still live at that address in your neighborhood and find out they live somewhere else. Don't just say, oh, thanks so much, you're not in my district. Say, have you updated your address on your voter registration? Um, because now we have this person who you're the only one with the phone number for them and the other person in there that they now live in a different district may not be contacting them. So please take the opportunity to educate them and, and about how to update their address on their registration. You can also do signature updates, party affiliation updates, and, um, and, and just so you know, when you do a paper form, which may not be the main mode here, but if you're going out, you, I would take paper forms with you and we'll talk about how you can get them um, because of bird in hand. <laughs> so you, you wanna make sure you have a paper form to offer someone should you encounter someone who needs the help. Um, 
But when you're filling out a new paper form, if they're only updating their address. Sometimes people say, well, I've been a Democrat for 30 years in Miami-Dade County. They know I'm a Democrat. So I'm just going to fill out the part all the way up to the address and then sign it and not choose the party affiliation while they end up being re-registered as non-party affiliated because the elections department assumes that if they didn't choose one, then they must not want one. So just make sure that whenever you do any of these updates, you're actually filling out a whole new form, including signature, a whole new form, and anything that's changed on the form will be changed in their voter file. Um, and I recommend that everyone, including all of us on this call, should check their voter registration information now, today, tonight, to make sure that their voter, voter file is still there and still accessible. I'm sure it's fine, but don't wait until it's too late to find out that it's not fine or that you look and you're like, oh man, I didn't realize. I, I wasn't, you know, look, the calendar doesn't work for any all of us anymore <laughs> with pandemic you know no one can keep track of time and who knows maybe you'll be like i moved and i forgot to do that i didn't realize so go to checkmyballot.miami and check on your voter registration status um, so the best methods to register to vote we talked about how you're going to carry paper with you if you're going out possibly to see a voter in person um, and you also, of course, have the option, if you're talking to someone on the phone, of directing them to uh, www.registertovote.miami. Um, now, this is going to lead you to the same place, if you don't get confused, if you've heard before about www.registertovoteflorida.gov, that is the same site this is going to take them to. This, however, is the Miami-Dade Democratic Party landing page where it will redirect them to the state site, but it gives them a little bit more information. So it's, it's a good, um, a good uh, place to start, uh, www.registertovote.miami. Um, if you register to vote online, it requires having a Florida ID and a social security. If um, that's the only problem, is you don't need a Florida identification to register to vote in Florida, but you do if you're going to do it online because it pairs with your DMV record while you are registering to vote. So um, that's the only glitch, is that if someone does come in from out of state, they're going to have to do it on paper. Um, the other way is an individual voter can go onto the Elections Department website, which is www.miamidade.gov, the same website where you can go to pay your water bill or what have you, um, or go to seek a garbage pickup or whatever, but slash elections. It's a great website with a great resource of material, um, but there you can go to the link that I've included here, and I think everything in this should be clickable for you online. Um, and on there, you can get the PDF of the, uh, that's the PDF that I did was for the English version. There's a Spanish and a Creole version as well of the form we're gonna go over, and we'll talk more about that. Um, and as I said, this method only requires the Florida ID or, not, or the Social Security, not both or you can use the forms that will be given to you by Lisa or I. Um, they are Miami-Dade Democratic, Florida Democratic Party forms. They are marked with a third party number, a 3P number. Third party means that um, there's the election department, there's the voter, and then there's us standing in the middle between the two, getting the job done for them, getting the job done for the elections department. Um, those forms we get from the elections department they are the same form someone can print out online, identical. The only difference is that the elections department prints a little 3P number on the bottom of the um, number, 3P1189 on the bottom of the back. Um, and the, they keep track of those. They know how many they've given us and how many we've given back to them. So they're, they're carefully, um, carefully held, closely held, so we need to make sure you, if you get some, get them back to Lisa and I so that we can get them to the Elections Department within 10 days of the date marked by the voter. That is our obligation under the law for being a third party organization that does register to vote, registering to vote. And when we, when we give you forms, we can talk more about that. And again, the deadline to apply is Monday, October 5th, 5 p.m. on paper, midnight online. So this is a little uh, graphic of the form. The form itself is just the obviously paper thing on the interior here. Um, you can use blue or black pen. I'm just gonna go over this part quickly. Um, and then you can select why the voter is filling out the form is this top little part. Um, is it a new registration? It is a record update. Um, or is it, do they just, when you under here, it says a new voter information card, or are they just looking to get a new voter information card? Anytime you register to vote, Anytime you fill out this form, it's going to send you a new voter information card. And 
you could do it, I've done it multiple times and with no new information and it just spits out a new voter information and it cannot hurt your registration. All it's going to do is change whatever you change. So, um, so just note that it's not the end of the world if somebody does it and realizes they didn't need to or whatever. It's, uh, are you a citizen of the United States is the first question. If you notice there are bold numbers down here, one through seven and number 12, those are the only ones that are required to be filled out in order to process the application. Um, that doesn't mean we don't want people to fill out as many as possible because the more complete the better um, and the more likely there won't be a problem. Are you a citizen of the United States? Easy yes or no. Number two, I affirm that I am not a convicted felon or if I am, my right to vote has been restored. So this applies to anyone who has either never had a felony conviction or has had a felony conviction, but feels that their rights to vote have been restored by the fact that they've completed their sentence and paid all fines and fees. And we talked about that a little bit already. Um, number three is I affirm that I have not been adjudicated mentally handicapped with respect to voting, or if I have, my right to vote has been restored. Um, I have not run into, I think I've run into once someone where I had a discussion about number three. So you're not gonna have to worry about that too much. Date of birth, remember the only important thing about date of birth is to remember that it's month, day, year, not day, month, year. We have many different cultures and this is where that comes into play. Um, make sure it's done correctly. And then the number five is Florida driver's license or last four of social security. It does not have to be both. So you only have to do one or the other. Um, and you can note here that at the end, it says there's a little box that says, I have none of these. That is not for us to fill out. That box means that someone is claiming that they have, do not have a Florida license and they have never been issued a social security number. It's not that I'm an 18 year old kid and I don't have my license on me, or you know, I don't know my social security and you know, my mom's not answering the phone, so let me just check that box. That's not what that means because that, they will look that person up and they will say, yes, they do have a social security number, we don't know why they claimed on their legal form that they don't, they must not be the real Joe Smith. So um, it will get rejected. Uh, so just so you know, Florida driver's license or social security when you're doing a paper form. Last name is the number one reason why forms are rejected in Miami-Dade County. Again, very multicultural uh, city, and we end up with a lot of people who use different cultural norms for their last name, and, um, and so, and, Often people don't realize that it has to be their legal name, which means it has to be the name that appears on their social security. If it's not, again, it will be rejected. And it's rejected because that's, that's a method to make sure that it really is Mary Beth Crusher and that somebody doesn't claim, put some other name in there, you know, and, and somehow say, oh, that's just what I used to use, you know, but it has to be the legal name that matches Social Security. So if you're with someone and they're writing and anytime they, you see someone, this is my cue, is if I see two words in there, I just always say, oh, is that your, the name on your Social Security? Just to double check and make sure that if they're using a hyphenated or double last name, that indeed they realize that it, it has to be whatever's on their Social Security. Middle name is, is not required. Um, it can be put in and suffix is not required, but it can, sometimes people just put an initial in the middle name, that's fine. Address where you live, um, means their address where they lay their head at night. If that is their mailing address, great. But if it's not their mailing address, they can put their mailing address below because this cannot be a PO box. Um, and number eight can be a PO box. Um, so moving on, I like to tell people to check the box on 11. So it says, email me a sample ballot. Email, getting a sample ballot means that 30 days before an election, you will get an email from the elections department, which will provide your entire ballot, what it looks like. This particular ballot that they send you is not a real ballot. It can't be used to vote. It can only be used to do your research, maybe even print it out and take it with you as a cheat sheet to the polls. You can take anything you want with you into the polls, relatively speaking. Um, you can take anything you want, any kind of material you want to help you vote. But this is a great one because you can print this out and mark it up and bring it with you and, and then vote easily. Um, so don't forget though, if someone checks that little box, email me a sample ballot, that in this space over here to the right, they need to write their email address. 50% of the forms that come back to me from volunteers come back checked, but with no email address. So the elections department can't email them if they don't provide an email address. 
Um, and then of course, not required down here is party affiliation. And we talked a little bit about at the beginning about how if someone does not choose a party affiliation, they are going to get registered as a no party affiliated person, NPA is what we call them. So someone is no non-party affiliated, independent is something else, that's actually one of the parties. Um, but non-party affiliated person is what is going to happen if someone does not choose one of the two major parties. They can't run in the, in the they can't vote in the primaries, of course, because you have to be a Republican or a Democrat in order to uh, vote in the primaries. And if you choose nothing, it will just be non-party affiliated. And then you have um, active duty military here, and I will need assistance voting, or I'm interested in becoming a poll worker. Generally, I've had almost so few people actually check something in here. Um, uh, although occasionally someone will say active, mil active duty military member. Um, and number 12, of course, is this is the little oath and they have to sign and they have to date. Date is not bolded for some reason on the actual form. The signature part is outlined, but the date is not. Don't forget to have someone date it because as I said, it has to be dated in order for us to turn it into the elections department. Before I continue, does anyone have a question about any of that? Okay, great. So we're gonna move on and we're gonna move on to vote by mail. So as I said, for a couple of years now, we've been pairing voter registration with vote by mail. We always will say to someone- Mary, Mary Beth, I actually do have a question. Sure. Um, so going back to the address where people- Uh-huh. That people who are without home could put a homeless shelter as their address. What about those in domestic violence, transitional housing? Where yes. this address- that address or is there like could they put a county office address because part of that is like they need to remain hidden so their address can't really be published and technically once you put it on the voter record that's public information so a abuser could find it okay so there is such a thing as people there are a lot of people whose addresses remain hidden elected officials um, oftentimes police officers sometimes um, you know, judges and court officers. So it, I would, if I ran into someone who was worried about that specific issue, because it was a women's shelter for battered women mm -hmm. instead of a homeless shelter, I would advise them to go to the election, to call the elections department about registering to vote. Okay, so, so I, I'm, I actually work with one. So there's, I have 20 women I wanna make sure registered so I could do that on their behalf and then get that situation. I would just wanna make sure that it doesn't get processed as normal and immediately be public before they even realize it as opposed to um, being careful and knowing and I'm being honest that I don't know the process or the procedure but um, I wouldn't an anonymously hand in, like I wouldn't wanna be responsible for handing in um, their forms and have, giving them any level of confidence that it won't just be treated as normal. So I would call the elections department and ask. Okay, great, thank you. Sure. Um, so vote by mail, you know, I, I, we, have, um, we have learned that vote by mail means that if someone is enrolled in vote by mail, meaning they get a ballot for every election for two general election cycles, um, they, t they have a 40 to 60% greater likelihood of voting and sometimes even more. Um, the reason is, and I, I'm, I'm not going to waste time going through all the statistics, trust me when I say it's phenomenal. So you get people who are uh, first time voters or cold voters and they end up voting at much, much greater uh, percentage rate if they are enrolled in vote by mail than those who are in the same category who are not in vote, in vote, enrolled in vote by mail. That ballot comes to their house 30 days before an election, sits on their kitchen counter, reminds them they're an election, that there's an election coming. And of course, we all know November 3rd election is coming. Um, I think you pretty much have to be living under a rock, um, but don't count on the fact that everybody knows when it is, right? We all know when it is. We know the exact date. There's not, not everyone knows that. They just know there's an election coming in November. Um, so the ballot also tells people when there's down ballot elections happening, maybe they're replacing a, a state house representative and suddenly someone who would never vote in a state house representative um, special election votes because it's so easy. It's the ballot just came set on my counter. I had to check one box and put it back in the mail. It was not that difficult. So participation rates um, go up enormously, but obviously today we have a very different situation, which is that um, people are looking for a no contact option during the pandemic. They don't wanna to have to wait on lines. They don't wanna to have to go in a crowded polling location. So obviously vote by mail is the answer. Um, 
vote by mail enrollment deadline, the deadline to actually request a ballot is Saturday, October 24th. That is 10 days before the election. I'm sure all of you, I don't need to preach to this choir, all of you understand the postal issues that are going on and that's very, very late. Um, so I would hope that we would be trying to get to as many people as possible prior to that to make sure people enrolled in vote by mail because our goal is to tell people to get their ballot filled out and returned in the mail by October 17th, which is the Saturday before early voting begins. Early voting begins on Monday, October 19th, and the 17th is the Saturday, which would be the last actual business postal day before the 19th. Um, so the place where you can go to register to vote, I mean, to register to enroll in Vote by Mail is www.votefromhome.miami. Again, another website that we created because on that website, if you go to it, it has a landing page that will ask you, and most people do it, is ask you for your information so that we can let you know when your ballot is on the way. And we text them that their ballot is on the way. We'll text them again and tell them that, um, that it's time to, you know, have returned your ballot. You know, have you returned your ballot yet? Don't forget to return your ballot. And we will also text them our slate information. Um, so it's great to send them to www.votefromhome.miami to enroll. It goes immediately then into the elections department website. Um, so um, it's a great place to go to, to enroll and vote by mail. Obviously the ballot provides, the vote by mail ballot provides an option to use the ballot to vote in person, but there's no requi requirement to use it. So it's flexibility, you can have it as a backup. And so if someone says, no, 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 I vote in person and I'm definitely voting in person in this one, great, uh, you know, awesome plan, glad you have a voting plan, but just in case your voting plan doesn't work out, just in case something happens, God forbid, you know, someone's ill or you're ill and you miss the whole, uh, you know, you miss, you miss, you're all the way up to middle of the week of early voting. If you had that ballot, you could have dropped it in a drop box. If you don't have the stamina to wait on a line to go into early, or you arrive at an early voting location. And this happened in 2018, Never mind what's going to happen this year. In 2018, uh, there were polling locations, early voting locations where there were three hour waits. And so if, if you arrive and you've got work in two hours and you thought you've got plenty of time and there's a three hour wait at the early voting location, if you had the ballot in your hand, you could drop it in the, the drop box at early voting. So it provides options. Um, went over that. Uh, it's good for two general election cycles. Just to clarify what that means is that if you enroll now, it's good for this presidential election. Every election that happens between now and the general election in 2022, and then um, it expires at the end of 2022 and at the beginning of 2023, the elections department will send everyone who's expired at that time a notification that their vote by, by mail enrollment has expired, not their voter registration, that's all fine. Their vote by mail enrollment has expired and they'll, she'll give them the, the card that will be sent, will give them information about where to go to re-enroll in vote by mail. Um, and then also you can direct, there is the option to direct your ballot if someone finds out now that they, they're gonna be away, they're gonna be visiting someone in Georgia for uh, in November, right now they can go do vote by mail and direct it to a, an, alternate, um, an alternate address outside of the state. Ballots cannot be forwarded though. So if you run into anybody who thinks they're just going to, no, no, I'm already enrolled in vote by mail, I'm gonna be away, but it'll, it'll get to me. No, it won't, ballots won't be forwarded. So just so you know that information. So again, methods to enroll in vote, vote by mail online, www.votefromhome.miami. I'm gonna do a quick look at that page. So this is what it looks like if you go to votefromhome.miami um, and then you provide your name, last name, da da da, we'll, we'll send you alerts. And then you can hit next and it will, no, I have to, give, I have to put something in, sorry, let me put in. And then it will go to, this is the regular site of the, of the elections department. So what you're sending people to is basically just the landing page where we collect the information in order to get them um, the information they may need as they lead up to the election. Um, obviously they can do it via paper form, which I provided you a link to the paper form as well. The thing, the difference between voter registration and vote by mail is voter registration is very controlled. They want it on that particular legal document or on that 
um, on that um, website that they set up. Vote by mail, they do not care how they receive the information. This is a form we drew up and we insisted that they approve, even they were like, we don't need to approve it, we don't care. Because all they want is to make sure you provide the name, your date of birth, you don't even have to provide the re voter registration information, that's optional. The address where you're registered to vote. Yeah, yes? Did someone say something? So the address where you're registered to vote and um, they need to provide which elections they want it for and a signature and the date. So um, in order to do that, you can email them, you can write a letter to them, you can actually call them on the phone because if you're sending it to your registered address, your own home that you're already registered to vote at, you don't actually need a signature. So um, your signature on, in, on your voter registration counts for that. So this is the form that we gave you a link to. This is an easy form to have people fill out. It also provides at the bottom the information about how else people can go about registering to vote. So this piece of paper, if you take this and make a bunch of copies before you go out and meet people, this piece of paper you can leave behind if someone says, oh, my husband didn't know, we saw I have to get my husband to enroll, you can say, here, take this. And he can either fill it out and mail it back to the elections department, or he can go online and do it. And you can actually, we didn't, at the time we made this, it didn't have our vote from home on it. So you can write www.votefromhome.miami at the bottom as well, and just hand it to them. They can keep this. They can't keep the register, voter registration form. You may never let go of those voter registration forms other than to allow someone to fill it out. They can't be left on someone's store counter because they get they have good traffic in there no unfortunately no you can print out a whole bunch off the internet that you could leave there that someone can mail in on their own but it's we can only process the ones that are are have our third party number on the back and we can, we're the only ones that can use them and uh, and go ahead and bring them back to the elections department okay so um, and then there are special instructions for overseas ballots and I gave you the link there and then you can also at again www.checkmyballot.miami check your current enrollment status so once you go to www.checkmyballot.miami this is what it's going to look like um, and when you go to it it asks you for this this page right here is the actual elections department page for voter info lookup so we it is embedded right in our page but we provide first that, oh, your ballot should be on its way, although that is from the primary. Um, we provide six simple steps to make sure your ballot counts, and we'll go over those in a minute. But so there's a link there to that. Um, did I lose where I was? I did lose where I was because I, I have too much stuff open. I can't get the thing to move. I don't know how to get it to move. Ah. Oh, I guess I got to go back. Um, so, uh, and then if you fill out your name, last name, I am not a robot and reset the CAPTCHA, um, you'll come to, you basically come to your own voter information. And it will say um, that you have a standing request to see the, receive a ballot. So this means that your ballot has been requested. You are enrolled in vote by mail. It just hasn't been sent yet, right? It'll be sent on October 1st and it hasn't been sent yet. So that's what it looks like on there. Um, the deadline to request a mail ballot, as we said, was October 24th, which we think is very, very late. So we strongly encourage voters, we, uh, we discourage voters from requesting and relying on receiving a vote by mail, by mail ballot at that late date. It's not a reliable voting plan. And a lot of what you'll be doing is trying to help voters get a reliable voting plan. Um, in this scenario, we encourage voters to vote in person at early voting unless circumstances do not allow. I think at, at that 10 day mark, you, it's more of an urgent situation. Um, if the request of the ballot for a ballot is made close to the deadline, a ballot will be mailed to the voter as soon as possible after the request is made. The latest mailing date from the elections department is eight days before the election, meaning if the latest request date is 10 days and the last mailing date is eight days, they promise to get them every ballot will be out within at least the two days of that deadline. So in the mail. But that means by the time a voter gets it, if they were to get it on you know, Sunday before election, they have to return that ballot, obviously, at an early drop box if they intend to use the ballot and not put it in the mail. Um, ballots can also be requested and returned 
by an authorized designee on election day at the election department, the SOE supervisor of elections, in the case of an emergency. And there's information about that here. You basically provide an affidavit that allows my husband to go get my ballot for me because I am, you know, infirmed now. I didn't, didn't anticipate it. And he's able to bring the ballot back, have me fill it out, and then return it on my behalf with the affidavit and going to the elections department. So receiving your ballot. So they mail the ballots between 40 and 33 days before an election. We've actually been notified that it is likely going to be October 1st that they will be mailing the ballots, the bulk, bulk mailing. So um, voters who requested a ballot should start checking at www check my ballot to see if the ballot has been mailed out to them by around October 5th, if the status, if they haven't received a ballot already. If the status indicates that a ballot has been sent out to the voter, but the voter didn't receive it within the next five days, or if the status indicates that no ballot has been requested, the voter should call the SOE immediately um, in order to get that resolved. Um, if the ballot is not received by mid-October or has been received and misplaced by the voter, a new ballot can be picked up in person at the Elections Department office in Doral or at the Stephen P. Clark Center in downtown. This service is available any business day up to and including election day. So if you're going for yourself to get a new ballot printed, you can go ahead and do that at the elections department. Um, returning your vote by mail. So there are options in returning your vote by mail. One is by postal service. Um, did anyone have a question? Okay. One is by postal service. Um, and there is no, um, there is no, uh, postage necessary, but the po but the ballot must be received by 7 p.m. on election day, uh, and you know that's a that's a firm deadline. We are not a state where it has to be postmarked by election day. It has to be received by 7 p.m. on election day. So here's the steps to go ahead and mail your ballot. Complete the ballot. Place the ballot inside the secrecy sleeve. There's a little little uh, Manila sleeve. Um, there's instructions that come with it too seal the envelope and fill out the contact info on the back of the envelope. The contact info is a new section that they've added to the back of the envelopes. If you didn't use it for these past two elections, you may not know, but there's contact info where it asks for email and phone number. Um, the purpose of that is if there's something wrong with what you've done, the elections department can contact the voter more quickly. In the past, it was a situation where they had to mail them a letter. <laughs> So if someone's mailing you a letter, chances are it's going to be too late for you to fix the problem. If they're emailing you or calling you or texting you, then there's a chance that that ballot can be cured, is what they call it, or fixed before election day. Sign the back of the envelope. That's the most number one reason why the ballots are rejected. The numbers were, and I'm going to make the round, I'm going to round them. <laughs> the numbers were something crazy like 3,500 ballots were rejected in Miami-Dade County during the primary. 200 and almost the, I mean, almost every single one of those was because the, there was a missing signature. There were something like 250 mismatch signatures, but 100% of the mismatch signatures were either corrected before it got to the canvassing board ultimately, before it got to the end of the election day, or were accepted by the canvassing board on election day. So they were all counted. So the mismatch signature issue turned out to not be a problem in the primary election. Of course, we're still concerned and want to we follow up. We have a team that goes ahead and is working on making sure that people who ballots who got rejected due to a cure problem. That is, that information is shared with us and we do seek the Democrats out and try to help them get it fixed before election day. But that is not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is by far people just not signing the envelope. So here's what the envelope looks like. Here's where people have to sign. And this is what people neglect to do, 3,500 people neglected to do in the primary, which we all know that 3,500 <laughs> is a big number. Um, when it comes to elections in Florida and Miami-Dade County. So right here, where my little cursor is, is where the contact info now appears on the envelope. This is an old image and it doesn't have the contact info. But um, we highly recommend filling all that out. So step two is to mail the ballot no later than 1017. We talked about that. No postage is necessary. Um, it, is a, it is a misconception. Postage will not help your ballot go faster. It might actually hurt the ballot. The ballot is, does go first class. There is no reason to add more postage or to think it's going to make it go faster. 
if you add postage it's, and it's an inadequate, I would worry that that would slow it down. I don't know that for sure, but I would worry that now you've screwed it up because you didn't put enough postage on it and you covered some of the, the indicator for the no postage necessary. So if it were me, I wouldn't touch it. Um, I would just put it in the mail. Um, and a ballot cannot be returned via FedEx or UPS, only via uh, postal service. And step three, wait a few days. This can take up to eight days. And the, as the closer you get to an election, the less time it actually takes to show up as counted because they're ramping up and they count more every day. Um, but you can begin checking at www.checkmyballot.miami to make sure that it's been counted. Here again is that screen that we looked at a little while ago. And that here it will show again that it was requested, it was sent to you. This will then be lit up blue if, it, if indeed it was sent. If they received it back, this will be lit up, lit up blue. Um, and if it's been counted. So sometimes it will say requested, sent and received and it won't say counted. And part of the reason is that early on, like say I get my ballot on, you know, they mail it October 1st and miraculously on October 3rd, I get my ballot and I literally fill it out and turn around and mail it on October 4th, and they get it on October 5th or 6th, they may not be counting the ballots yet. Doesn't mean that they're not holding on to them in a safe place, but they may not have opened them and scanned them yet. I don't know the date that this year. Do you, Lisa? I think it's 22 days before I'd have to count backwards 22 days. <laughs> right. So if you are yeah. one of the people who doesn't, you know, just so you know, in case a voter, because you've made yourself the person who people can ask questions, if someone asks you, um, I mailed it back on the third and I don't know why it's not showing, it says received. If it says received, it's safe with them and it should just check back again, you know, in a week or two and make sure that it's been counted. Um, and then your other option for returning it is, of course, now the drop box during early voting. So we consider this to be the recommended method to use a vote by mail ballot after October 17th, the Saturday, October 17th. And again, here's the early voting schedule that um, we, is that it? No. 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 Here it is. This is the early voting schedule. Schedule basically is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every single day from Monday, October 19th through Sunday, November 1st. Um, and these are all the sites. They are pretty much all the usual sites, um, but uh, you can look at this carefully and note the sites that, that are in your neighborhood so you're aware of what the locations are that you can send people to. And then outside every single early voting site, there's going to be at least one, and in many early voting sites, two, drop boxes under tents, under you know the, the tailgate tents. Um, and there'll be a voter, uh, a poll worker who's standing outside next to this drop box. So step one would be the same as the other, which is fill it out and please God, don't forget to sign it um, and put the contact information on it, on the back of the ballot, on the back of the envelope. Step two is, so if you're returning your own ballot and you wanna return it to the drop box, you're going to provide your identification and your ballot and they will take it and they will verify the signature and they will stamp it self. Literally the word self will be a big stamp on the envelope. And then they will, you can, if I wanted to return my husband's, then I would do the same thing. And by the way, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going in order here. Um, they will, no, it's not true. I'm going to, I'm going to give my story the way I want to give it. <laughs> So, sorry. So if I want to turn mine, that's what they'll do. They'll stamp it as self. But if I return my husband's, they're going to take my ID and take his ballot and they're going to write down the number that runs along the little side of his ballot. And they're going to write that down in a log and then they're going to write my name in the log. And so as the person who turned in ballot number, 19 numbers. Um, so, uh, so they will ask for identification for that purpose. Um, if I'm returning my own ballot and I don't provide ID, they will not, um, they will still take the ballot and they will still go ahead and drop it in the box. It won't be, it won't be um, identified as self. There is some confusion, some contradiction in these, in these acceptance processes and you may find contradiction in your experience when you go to the ballot. It is because there is an there is a state law which requires the ballot box to stand there 
and a poll worker to stand next to it. Under the state law, this poll worker is required to look at the back, make sure it is sealed and that it contains a ballot inside and it is sealed and then make sure that someone has signed it, which is excellent, right? Because someone who returns this to the box, that means they're going to sign it. It's because the poll worker is gonna make sure. They are not required to check ID. In Miami-Dade County, years before ballot boxes existed, there was an ordinance passed that said that if someone is returning a ballot that is not their own, they must provide some, so there must be a control mechanism and they must provide some sort of identification. So while this law didn't particularly apply to the drop boxes, and our supervisor of elections feels that it doesn't really apply to the drop boxes. And um, she is giving a nod to the idea of, of trying to make sure that we keep track of someone who's dropping off others' ballots. So um, that is why if you drop off your own, you don't have to provide an ID. But if you do, it'll get marked self. If you're dropping off more than one, you do have to provide an ID in order to have someone keep track of of how you know what ballots you dropped off. Um, so again, you're going to same steps. You're going to show the ID is required in dropping more than one ballot. There's not a, a well as again. There's not a well defined limit to the number of ballots allowed to be returned to a drop box. It is our recommendation that a voter bring only those of their own family and maybe one friend or neighbor outside the family, because that pretty closely mirrors what the ordinance is in Miami Dade County. Um, but that's our recommendation just because it is probably the safest thing to do um, anyway. So um, step three, wait a few days and begin checking to see whether the ballot was received and counted at www.checkmyballot.miami. This can take up to eight days as we talked about, although generally it's less time, closer to election time. Um, so this is dropping it off in a drop box during early voting. You can still drop it off in a drop box after early voting ends. On Monday, November 2nd, which is the day in between early voting and election day, the day before election day, and on Tuesday, election day, currently they plan to have four drop box locations available throughout the county. That would be North Dade Regional Library, Stephen P. Clark Center downtown, the Supervisor of Elections in Doral, and South Dade Regional Library. The same drop box procedures will apply. Um, but you do have the option to bring it to those four locations. We're hoping they might expand that, although I don't know where we are on that, whether or not they are willing to expand those, the number of locations that are available. We are also hoping to make sure that we have some sort of signage at all of the early voting locations so that people who show up at one of the early voting locations on Monday or Tuesday thinking they can just drop off their ballot there, at least have some direction as to where they can go to drop off their ballot. So um, we are working on that. Um, and then, of course, you have the option of in-person voting. In-person voting during early voting, which we talked about many times, the 19th first, 7 p.m., I mean, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. There's gonna be 33 voting sites across the county. I put maybe 34 because um, at the time that I wrote this, the idea of the American Airlines Arena was in the mix. And uh, since then, Mayor Jimenez has rejected that as an option. Um, there is some hope among some people that it might still be added. Um, so I, I left the possibility of 34 in there. Um, again, they are open all day, every day, Saturday and Sunday included, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. They enforced masks and social distancing. The drop boxes are outside. And again, you can walk up to them or drive up to them. Um, and voters registered in Miami-Dade County can vote at any early voting location during early voting. It doesn't have to be the one close to your house. So during, during non-COVID world, Stephen P. Clark was an extremely busy voting location because a lot of people would vote during work. Um, so you don't have to go to the one that is near where you live. Um, and again, in-person voting can also be confirmed online. So what you're doing when you go to checkmyballot.miami is looking up your voter information file and it will show where you voted, what day you voted, and at what location you voted if, if it was not by mail. Or it will show that it was by mail and it was received and it was counted. Um, and then on Monday, November 2nd, there is no in-person voting. So there's only the ability, only thing available in between the end of early voting and election day is that four drop box options for uh, the vote by mail. But there's no in-person voting. And election day. Of course, on election day, people can use one of those four drop boxes or 
they can go vote in person at their polling place in the precinct. Um, people should never leave their ballot at a polling place thinking that it, somebody's gonna take it and take it in. <clears throat> it's not true. Uh, you know, Lisa's on voter protection team and she can tell you that there were, was a lot of misinformation given to voters when they arrived at um, their precincts thinking that they could drop their ballot. Um, and some people said, no, you know, poll workers looked at some people in the face and said, no, sorry, you can't do that here. And the voter would turn around and walk out and no one would say, no one would say, hey, but you can vote in person. Come, let me help you. Instead, they let a voter walk away, and which is just crazy. So, um, you know, there, there's training and then there's training. <laughs> and sometimes you just can't, you know, just can't teach people, you know, common sense. So, um, so, you know, if you're speaking to someone who says my voting plan is to vote on election day, make sure they understand that they can't leave a ballot there. Um, and um, uh, we talked about that. Uh, yeah, and of course, they should never try to mail their ballot past the, the date we talked about, the 17th. Um, that's it. Um, I think we're good. I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, I left you on, on the end of this. I tried to put a, lot, a bunch of the links. And I also gave you the Florida Democratic Party Voter Assistance Hotline number. Um, and they are available to help voters with their questions as well. So um, that is something you can give out to people. And in lieu of this, we could have just done this deadline thing, which is the VR deadlines 10-5, the VBM deadlines 10-24, ballots drop around 10-1, meaning that's when they're getting mailed by the elections department. So the ballots will be in, in, in Democrats in your neighborhood's mailboxes, hopefully sometime in the first week of, of October. People will start voting in the first week of October. And we hope they will mail back their ballots by 10-17. And that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Mary Beth, um, I'm just wondering about the security of the drop bo boxes. Do they pick the, um, you know, can people like drop things off even at night in the drop boxes no. or are they taken in at night or what, no. ha what happens yeah. as far as security? See, you will see, I'm going to stand back up to the picture of it. You will see that it is very much, see it has wheels on it. It is very much mm -hmm. as mobile as it looks. Um, okay. And it is, you know, it is wider than me as a person, but not that much, you know, it's a square that is, you know, mm. uh, not too large and it's probably about um, four and a half, five feet tall. So, mm. uh, and it is, it is taken in by the elections department every, mm. every night and okay. the ballot removed and the ballots brought back to the elections department every night. The ballots okay. are not sitting inside any early voting location ever. So, um, and it is manned, as I said, by an elections department official 100% of the time. As a matter of fact, where I went, which was two different places um, during the course of the primary, I returned my ballot, my husband's in one location. I went back to that same location to return one of my sons. And then a third time I went to, on election day, to South Dade Regional Library to return my other son's ballot. And, um, and every time there was more than one person at the, at the drop box. So mm. I don't know if that's a planned thing or if that, at, at, at the one in South Dade Regional, there were actually two boxes and two tents set up, um, but there was nothing going on <laughs> because I was the only person there. And um, so they were sort of in the middle talking to each other. But, um, but you know, so there was, there, no one was ever alone with the drop box either. So. Okay. so does anyone have any other questions? So my job was to make sure that when you are out um, speaking with voters, you feel like you have, uh, you know, the information you need to communicate effectively with them about making a plan to vote. Um, and if there's anything you think I've missed, please feel free to ask me and you know, I'd be happy to share with others what the answer might be um, or, you know, any questions you might have. All, All right. Now. Thank you, Mary Beth. Thank you. Great, great. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. All right, good. I hope I hope it's at least useful to you. And <laughs> you know, so yeah. I too I too am a committee person, and we'll be reaching out to some of the people um, who are in the D DEC and trying to get um, you know some outreach to voters in my neighborhood also. So, so if you ever need Lisa or I, um, 
and you are with, particularly if you're with a voter who's asking a question, or even if you're on the phone with a voter who's asking a question, please shoot me a text. If I see a text that you say, I'm on the phone with a voter, they're confused because of X, Y, Z, I'd be happy if, as long as I'm not driving, I will answer your text as soon as I can, um, you know, usually quite immediately, and, and you know, tell you what to tell them. It may not always be the answer that's easy. It might be, ah, oh, sorry, they're gonna have to call the elections department or, you know, what have you. Um, but, um, but at least it's an answer that you'll be able to give with some, you know, instead of letting a vote go, that maybe someone will be like, ah, eh, it's too much of a hassle, I'm not gonna do it, you know? So, so uh, please reach out to us. And I think I provided on the last page down there, the contact information, forgive me for scrolling, um, for Lisa, both Lisa and I. Okay. okay. Thank you. Very much, Thank have you. a great evening. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you very, very much. much. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.